knocking on heaven's door. Wait a second. <laughs> there, are you happy you lot? I blew my nose. Please stop asking. But seriously, the amount of comments telling me to blow my nose and asking if I was crying is actually insane. Anyway, yes, Knocking on Heaven's Door is a Five Nights at Freddy's fan game that was actually released very recently and the story behind it is very sad to say the least. The main menu, you can kind of gather what is going on with the fact that it is designed like a heart monitor. My name is Lily and I am seven years old. For my seventh birthday, my parents brought me to Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria. But when they were singing happy birthday, Something bad happened. Then my head was dizzy, and I woke up here. Now, where is here, you might be asking. Looking around the area, you can clearly tell you are laying in a hospital bed. Lily, the little girl you are playing as, had some sort of incident, maybe due to an accident or disease that was formed within her that caused her to become bedbound. Most likely cancer, specifically a brain tumor since her head went dizzy before fainting. I love the design for this game. Everything seems to be in black and white beside the TV that is positioned above us. The black and white aesthetic is also just very cool and creates an eerie atmosphere. The flashlight you are given also shines a Freddy face, which I think is a nice touch. The whole point of this game is to keep your stress down whilst also trying not to make too much noise. If your stress maxes out, you actually just fall and have a heart attack and die. To keep your stress down, you can either play with your teddy bear that makes some noise, you can also draw, but after completing a drawing, you'll need to sharpen your pencil, which creates a lot of sound. And then you also need to switch the TV channel when creepy shadows start to appear. Obviously, the four animatronics that are known for the first FNAF appear, but with very different designs that are just awesome. Awesome. Freddy will appear at the end of the bed, starting off being once every hour and more frequent as time goes on. His design showing an extreme amount of fur and basically just being a bear with a top hat is just so simple but so good. To deal with him, all you need to do is shine your torch at him until he stands up menacingly and then disappears. The next animatronic that shows themselves is Bonnie. He's wearing a party hat and tends to just either sit to the right, stand behind Freddy or stand to your left. To avoid him from jump scaring you, just make sure you don't shine your flashlight at him. This is particularly difficult when he's standing beside Freddy, as to defer Freddy, you need to shine the torch in its direction. Foxy also then starts to show up, first standing very creepily outside the window on your left, then after some time he runs off, but soon later starts to appear under your bed like a weirdo. To slow him down as he edges out, you need to turn the key on the back of his neck. However, after some time, he will start moving again, and when he does jump onto the bed, you have to spam the spacebar to get him off, unless you'll die. Chica also makes an appearance, oh, Chica, I miss you, I'm not the you, Chica. but only shows when you call the nurse. Sometimes Chica disguises herself as the nurse and comes into the room, but if you press the button again, the door slams in her face. Even though knocking on heaven's door is short, I thoroughly enjoyed my time playing the game and hope many updates come out, giving us more as for what little was given to me, I still loved every aspect, being both the redesigns of the four characters and the initial gameplay. In my mind, this is a solid beta game as it's great, but obviously it's not fully cooked yet. The Five Nights at Freddy's franchise has been thriving for the last 10 years, creating many critically acclaimed games that raise an entire generation and even a movie. First I raise your brother, now I raise you. Skibbity, my friend! So there is no surprise it influenced a bunch of fun games, so today I'll explore five of the most notorious, with a couple even having some dark controversies, and then ranking them on how good they actually are. So sit back and relax, and enjoy this deep dive into some of the scariest Five Nights at Freddy fan games of all time. Also, join the Discord to talk to me and other fans of the channel, and get updates about my future videos. The Joy of Creation was released way back in 2017, but currently is being remade with the demo having been relaunched on August 2nd of this year. The Joy of Creation is very unique in its own way, even though it still uses the core four animatronics. The game begins in a strange way with you selecting Contemplate on an eerie screen. A surge emergence. Contemplate. A need to know more. Observe. A strange vision lacking description. Observe. Dots against the void. Observe. The world turns for me. Observe. A path. A destination path. We are then confronted by a blue screen, and without proper context, you may believe this to be the worst jump scare of them all. The belief that your computer has just gone out and pooed itself. But don't worry, this is all part of the game. Getting up from the computer, you start to get a feel for the game, and especially its amazing design. The quality is phenomenal. The power in the house we are in seems to be going out. 
so we replaced the fuse at the fuse box. But gee willikers, Batman, do you have to be so aggressive when handling your electrics? Like with any movement this man makes, it's done with such ferocity. Like sit down, man, drink a hot chocolate, your life isn't that terrible. Oh wait, it is. On one of the security cameras, it seems like Freddy Fazer himself is stalking us. Horror, 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 horror. Let's not say hello to him, as he might touch us like P. Diddy touched Alvin in the Chipmunks. Your flashlight can also lose power over time if overused, but at the fuse box you're able to replace the battery but make sure you focus on using the fuses on the main power as like most fan games if your power goes out you better make sure you have a spare pair of underwear <laughs> just kidding no actual jump scare but our computer does switch back on creator I've constructed this scenario just for you. I believe you call this a game. The rules should be familiar to you. To win, find the bear and blind it. Do this until the clock completes a full rotation. Do not let the power go out. Replace the flashlight's fuse when its light goes weak. The light must be aimed at the bear's location. If you miss, it will flee. I'll be watching over you. Good luck. What just happened? Well, good sir, you just had a cheeky little nightmare. Waking up, it's time to lock in. To find fuses, you have to look in drawers to hopefully obtain one. With such anger, because this man has no chill. Unfortunately, you can only hold one at a time. So if you find another one, you just have to put its location into your memory bank and come back later. Now it's time to find good old Freddy Fazner's. Looking at the camera, we search for the bear. Bear, he's creeping in the hallway to the left. Let's go blind the sucker. Oh Jesus Christ. Well, that seemed like it worked. Okay, let's do it again. He seems to be outside this time. Yeah, take that. Okay, it's 2am. I just need to make it to 6, right? That would make sense for a Five Nights at Freddy's game, right? Let's try and find him again. Is he outside? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, oh damn, our camera has just been destroyed. That was Bonnie, the lovable, abusive rabbit that seems to like punching things, even us if we are not careful. Oh god, my nose! To actually sort out this issue with the camera, we need to replace the fuse at the electrical box. Something else we need to balance with the main power and our flashlights. As you can tell, as hours go by, the difficulty increases. Going back to the cameras, we can see another friend that seems to want to join the party, Foxy. To deal with this goofy goober, all we need to do is look him in the eyes for our screen. Clearly, he's a little shy boy and doesn't like eye contact. Oh god, oh god, I'm sorry! <laughs> Yeah, so if you don't deal with Foxy, he'll come out and kill you. So make sure you are checking if he's on the cameras. And don't go into the same room he's in either. In my time playing the game, Foxy was definitely the worst animatronic to come by, as he just made my life a living hell. Every time he dealt with him, the next time he showed up, you had to look more and more into his eyes. He was just a hassle. We've now been confronted by Freddy, Bonnie, and Foxy. So the last of the core four to encounter now is Chica. Oh look, right on cue. You can realise she is coming, putting an eerie sound building up, and ooze leaking out the ceiling. This is where she pops out at, dangling from above. To deal with her, you can't come into contact with her directly. Instead, you have to look for cupcakes within drawers and cupboards and evaporate them with a torch. After you get rid of them all, she disappears. By the way, remember when I said it would make sense that the game would end at six like a normal Fazbear classic? Yeah, this game doesn't. You have to complete 12 hours of this cycle and dealing with Freddy for the last time, makes him run off with his pants down. The demo is now complete, with a nice little to be continued for when the game officially releases. In my opinion, Joy of Creation is a spectacular fan game that incorporates the base IP of FNAF in a very unique way. Having different ways to deal with the animatronics, being forced to juggle multiple problems with the fuses, and even being allowed to roam freely are some of the few gameplay mechanics I really enjoy. I'm looking forward to where this game goes, and I would like to rank it in the A category because of it, not S as of yet, due to the fact that this is a demo and is not fully baked yet. Also, the aggressive movements of our character were just very off-putting. The next game on our list is Dormitibus, and this game is a doozy. There's a lot of controversy behind this that I'll get into later about the game's creator that got him shunned from the community because of what was included in the game and what he turned out to be. But like I said, I'll get into it later and make sure there's a content warning before I discuss it. The graphics to this game are a lot toned down compared to the joy of creation. As you can see, it looks drawn. Dormitibus is set in a timeline where only the first four FNAF games took place and incorporates the gameplay techniques of those games. We have the movement sim 
similar to FNAF 4. We have security cameras, similar to the first FNAF. And we have no way to close doors, like FNAF 2. A phone begins to ring, and we move over to the computer to listen to the phone guy. According to the wiki, the man on the phone is Peter Wright, someone we can assume to be our brother, as we are called John Wright. Peter is basically the guide for the game, telling you how to deal with the animatronics on each night. He also tells us about these tapes that we can find each night, with the first being to our left on the table. These are really important, as they allow us to get out of this place. And where is this place exactly? Well, according to Peter, we are actually dead, and this is purgatory. Dormitibus actually means you will slumber, which makes sense now that as we are in an eternal sleep, with the animatronics trying to kill us and stuff us in a cake bear animatronic. Anyway, with night one, the only animatronic we have to deal with is Havoc Freddy. He normally shows up at the left door, and to get rid of him, all we need to do is run to the opposite side of the room. Very simple. For some reason in this game, we have to survive till 7am, not 6am. Because for some reason, Five Nights at Freddy fan games now hate 6am. Going back to the main menu, we can actually listen to the tape we acquired, named March 17th. It's a shame. Such a shame. I didn't really want to do this. I didn't want to start doing this again. But they just won't shut up about it. It's not my fault. I can't control my physical mutations. It's not like anyone ever cared for the truth. All they ever wanted was to harm me. But this will be the end. And not without consequences. I'm going to be recording the most important parts of my plans here. As a reminder for myself. The man speaking is known as Garvey Wright, another brother within the Wright family. As you can start to assume, the Wrights are basically the Aftons within the Dormitibus universe, and Garvey is the substitute for William Afton. The physical mutations Garvey is talking about in this tape clearly being the change into Purple Guy. Night 2 introduces two new animatronics, Cake Bear or Am I Real and Havoc Chica. Cake Bear will switch to Am I Real if you're not watching him on the cameras, and if you don't watch him for too long, he will kill you. Cake Bear looks like Freddy Fazbear's, and Am I Real looks like Spring trap. so clearly in this universe, they are one and the same. In the character page, you can also see the models for each animatronic in more detail, and I can't lie, they all look pretty ass, especially the Havoc animatronics, as they all are just mangle variants of the characters. Pretty terrible. Anyway, the best way to deal with him is whenever he turns to Am I Real, watch him on the screen for a few seconds, and he'll revert to Cake Bear. To deal with Havoc Chica, it is pretty simple as well. She'll show up at the right door, and when this happens, all you need to do is run to the other side, then look at her for a few seconds. This will unleash the cupcake into the room, where all you need to do is return to the computer before it bites your butt cheeks. In night two, you can also find another tape within camera two. This one is labeled March 18th. It, 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 it was, it was easy. Just so, so easy. All I had to do was surprise him. He couldn't even fight back. I dragged him into my purple car and brought him to my basement. He blew out real quick. <laughs> oh, the human body is hilarious. So fucking pathetic. I dumped him in the dumpster behind the cake bears. All his friends don't even know yet that they will suffer the same thing. This is Garvey again, but talking about one of his kills and how easy it was. This man is the golden example of an edgelord. Now onto night 3, where we are introduced to Soul Cage, a creature that is the fusion of the core 4 animatronics in a disgusting mangled concoction. Anyway, to combat Soul Cage, all you need to do is look at it when it appears at the right. This will make it jump at you, and then all you need to do is look up until it leaves. During this night again, you can also collect a tape labelled July 5th, and this is where I'm going to initiate the content warning, as I'm going to start to talk about a lot of disgusting stuff like paedophilia, necrophilia, and transphobia. So skip to the next game if these topics will make you uncomfortable. Anyway, onto the tape. <laughs> My god! This is most certainly beginning to be... fun. There's this hot 15 year old that was- Hold up! What did he say? Rewind the clip. There's this hot 15 year old that was- What in the- This guy just said that the 15 year old was hot? Yeah, buddy, off the prison you go. Lock this guy up and throw away the key. Yeah, so as you can see, the creator of this game for some reason has turned William Afton into a pedophile. FNAF is known to cover dark topics with child murder, but it's done in a very tame and sensible way. Scott Coffin never wanted paedophilia to have anything to do with the franchise, so this right here is a complete throw shit in your face moment. However, it's no surprise that this absolute vile scenario has been implemented into this fan game, as the creator behind the game, Blackout1912, was accused of being a pedophile, manipulator, 
blackmailer, transphobe, and necrophile. This freak had a lot of disturbing fetishes, like the sexualization of murder, having sex with dead bodies, and the love for the idea of women being sexually abused. Just a lot of sick and sadistic stuff that clearly he incorporated into Dolmitibus. Messages were also leaked of him talking to a literal 12 year old in a sexual matter. Blackout 1912 is a twisted individual that ruined his game with all these weird ass fetishes and brought shame upon the FNAF community with his vile fantasies. The fourth tape you can get in this game also blatantly tells us that the purple guy paid the Freddy mask kid to kill the crying child. Like why are you trying to ruin the legacy of FNAF with this absolute tomfoolery? Game in general is pretty decent. I like the use of different gameplay mechanics from each FNAF game, but I didn't like the designs for the animatronics as they weren't very original. Without thinking about Blackout 1912 and excluding the blatant paedophilia within the game, I would have put it in the lower B tier. Because of this disgusting content, I have to lower it to at least C tier, maybe even D tier. Now, One Night Out Flumpties takes the beloved character of Humpty Dumpty and turns him into a maniacal, flesh-eating monster. This game also has some disturbing real-life issues about the creator that I'll address later. As you may have gathered by the name of the game, you only have to survive one night here, similar to knocking on heaven's door. All we have to do is survive till 6am. The room we are situated in has a lot of references that you may be able to recognise, but my favourite is the key sword from Kingdom Hearts. We get a phone call from Flumpty himself. Hi, I'm Flumpty Bumpty. I'm an egg. I'm immune to the plot and I can transcend time and space. Also, I'm coming after you. You can figure out the rest. Have fun. <laughs> Yeah, there is no phone guy, only Flumpty. He kidnapped us to be placed into this murder house for him to play with and kill. On cam 1, you can see Flumpty sitting facing away from the camera with a block boy sitting beside him. This is birthday boy Blam, but I call him the cheese boy, and you'll see why in a minute. The gameplay is basically the same as Five Nights at Freddy's. You just have to watch the cameras and see where Flumpty and the gang are, and shut the door when they get close to your room. A few minutes in, and Flumpty will be on the move. Look how cute he is. He definitely won't hurt us, right? <coughs> Never mind. Cheese Boy doesn't seem to be a happy boy as he stares emotionless at the camera. He also normally comes to us from the right side, looking very distinguished, smoking his pipe. However, if you're not careful, he'll get you and show you his holy face. <coughs> the reason why I call him the cheese boy. There is also another cretin we can find on camera 6, being the beaver. It is reading a newspaper that actually gives him some story for the game, being that Flumpty kidnapped someone because he felt like it, that being us, and man drinks lava and lives kinda. This will make sense when we are introduced to someone else. The newspaper also makes a joke about running out of toilet paper, which is funny as the beaver sits in the toilet, but this is actually knowledge that we need to deal with the beaver when he comes for us. This is because at about 3am, the beaver will run out of toilet paper and run to our room on his feet with knives. When this happens, we need to quickly lock the door, just like how you do when Foxy rushes to the office in FNAF. Around 3am is also when camera 3 is revealed to see a volcanic room. Remember about the news clipping about a man who survived drinking lava? Yeah, this is where he came from. Certain cameras become blanked out with red VHS footage, and this is where the red man is located. So make sure if you're playing this game to see if he's at camera 2A, as he might appear at your door. At 4am is when Grunkfuss the clown starts to emerge from the walls. Now every time you open the camera, he will slowly creep further and further towards the player, until attacking you after 30 times. One Night of Flumpties is a pretty decent fan game for FNAF, having unique characters, so in my opinion, it's a B tier game. There's actually two other games in the series, so if you want me to cover the franchise, comment down below. However, like I said before, the creator Jonochrome had some controversy similar to Blackout 1912. When he was 21, Jonochrome had a romantic relationship with a 13 year old girl. If you're a child or uncomfortable with this topic, please go to the next game. Anyway, Jonochrome would try to initiate a sexual relationship with this girl, and this is not allegations, but all confirmed by Jonochrome himself. A lot of tweets from this situation are deleted now, but John's is still up. Apparently John and his victim are on good terms, but that does not excuse the disgusting behaviour he's committed with grooming a child. The final game on this list is Five Nights at Treasure Island. Treasure Island is a historical novel that was also made into a film by Disney, so there's no surprise that this game is a FNAF recreation using some of the classic Disney characters. This game is actually my favourite out of all the games I covered today, as the vibe it creates is completely different to the rest. The game's design is very detailed and vibrant, and the gameplay mechanics are pretty unique to the game. The game also is taking shots at Disney as a company, and god I love that since the amount of bad stuff the corporation likes to get up to. Starting the first night, we get a phone call from someone named Greg. We also learn our name is Jake. He tells us how to deter the first creature we come across being photonegative hey Mickey. If it does happen to wander into your workspace, just turn up one of your security cameras. The loud sound the camera makes should lure that thing away. 
It wanders from camera to camera before finally making it to our office. It cannot see and only relies on hearing, so by turning off one of the security cameras, it will wander back into the building. Looking through the cameras, you can also notice different memorabilia for classic Disney such as Mickey Mouse masks, Goofy and Daphne shirts, and even the head of Goofy laying still. I don't think this is what Mickey meant when he asked Goofy to give him head. The other mechanics for the game consist of turning off the lights to conserve battery and standing still. However, when turning off the lights, you have to be careful not to do it for so long as they might permanently switch off, leaving you defenseless and unable to access anything. There's another weird ass looking Mickey on night one, but he doesn't seem to do anything but be noticeable on cam one. After each night, we are subjected to a cutscene, which I'm guessing has something to do with the story for the game. Fractures of memories we have to piece together. Now we are on night two. We receive another phone call, this time from Lisa. She tells us all about Oswald. If you don't know who he is, he was the protagonist of many Disney shorts within the 1920s. He has the same behaviour as Mickey, with the only way to deter him is by turning off one of the cameras. Lisa doesn't tell us about him, but Donald Duckage is also here to invade our ears with the worst sound in existence. And again, the only way to get rid of him is by turning off the cameras. So now we have three creatures needing cameras to be turned off to get rid of them, making the limited amount a problem. After completing another night, we return to the same room from before. It's now night three and we are warned about something known as the Headless One and to stand still when it appears. We also receive another phone call. Uh, uh, hello? Hello, is anyone there? <sighs> if anyone is hearing this, my name is Henry. I, I don't have much time. Uh, I'm one of the SSA's interns. I'm stuck in pirate caverns. Please, whoever finds this message, help me. I, I know a lot of things about this place. I can't say it all over the phone. They could be listening. Just please come get me out of here. I'm on the second floor. Now, our first interaction with Goofy, who is the headless one, was pretty horrible, as Mickey also showed up. I had a standstill to get rid of Goofy, but that meant Mickey jumped my bones in a non-consensual way. However, yes, when standing still, Goofy then goes away. Night 3 obviously is more difficult than the previous, but by this point, I had a strategy. I kept on turning off the light for 4 seconds to prevent it from going permanently out whilst looking left or right for any appearances of our favourite Disney characters. If they did, or then turn off the camera. This was the only time I actually went on cameras, as in general, they were pretty useless. Night 3 also introduces Minnie Mouse, who looks rotten and disgusting, who has the same behaviour as Mickey, but also seems to follow him like an obedient dog. Anyway, we complete night 3, and now make our way into Pirate Caverns. This section of the game is actually pretty cool, as it changes from being stuck behind a desk like a bum, to instead having you wander the halls of the building. Obviously in this place, we are not alone, and if we see eyes, we have to use our flashlight, and if there are no eyes, we have to stand still and not make a sound. Going through, there is barely any sound, making everything creepy. Getting to a certain room, the game prevents us from going any further. This is because... Jeez Louise, that was so loud. I didn't notice him, but Mickey was hiding in the bottom left, meaning we had to flash him to move further. Luckily, this made me figure out if I can't carry on to the next room, I just had to flash and it would save me from being jump scared. Or not. We make our way through Pirate Cove to a staff-owned room. The room contains drawings of Mickey with They Are Lying and Listening, written in what I'm guessing is blood on the walls. This is very creepy, but what makes it worse is Mickey himself is flashing on and off the screen. This is where I finished playing Five Nights at Treasure Island, and in my opinion, it's one of the best on the list, as the gameplay is familiar whilst being different to Five Nights at Freddy's. This is clearly an S-tier game, and it clearly has some story behind it, but I've not fully uncovered what it is yet. So if this video performs well, and you guys want me to do a whole video on this game, leave a comment in the description. So there you have it, 5 of the best and scariest FNAF fan games you can play for free. Try them out for yourself and see if you can survive the night. Before this video ends, I just want to give a big thank you to everyone who watched and supported my channel in the past 2 weeks since my Roblox video came out. My channel has received so much love having me go up 3,000 subscribers. My next video will be another deep dive into creepy Roblox games, so look forward to that. If you enjoyed this deep dive into FNAF fan games, please consider subscribing for future videos. Keep on living, have a damn good day, and bye for now. And throw that ass up, blood so big I can pull you